have but one planet to live in the only gem in the universe known to man so far to have the kind of life that there is in it let us nurture it with care let the future generations cherish what we bequeath to them hello tara you are early today ha charu chachi it's such a beautiful day the birds do seem to think so it was the symphony of their melodies that awakened me look at polly he is proudly shaking his head with his beak stuffed with some figs as if he has just won a trophy he probably got them from that people tree which is laden with the bright red figs yesterday it was the jamun fruit that he had breakfasted on and polly is not the only one look at the variety of visitors the people tree has drawn all enjoying its figs i can see barbets bulbuls a golden oriole some grey hornbills and polly's cousins the parakeets even the squirrels and bats are having a field day and i'm quite sure there must be some insects too though we can't see them we are lucky to be living in a place where nature is conserved and the biodiversity of both flora and fauna is thriving even polly is agreeing wholeheartedly not all places are so rich in biodiversity of flora and fauna isn't it charu chachi you are right tara deserts scrublands and high altitude mountains where there isn't much vegetation owing to unfavorable climate have fewer animals talking of biodiversity we are fortunate to be living in a country with so many geographic variations ha huh. I know we have the snow-capped Himalayan mountains, gigantic plains, Rajasthan's hot desert, Sundarban swamp, western and eastern ghats, and northeast India's rainforest. India is landlocked on one side and surrounded by water on other three sides, and is dotted with the Andaman and Nicobar and the Lakshadweep island clusters. Wah wow, wah. Wow. You know your geography very well. So, different physical features form so many different types of ecosystems like the marine ecosystem, mountain ecosystem, desert ecosystem just to name a few. In fact, India has the privilege of being considered as one of the 12 mega diverse nations in the world. Which are the other mega diverse nations? Hmm. Let me see. Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Mexico, Zaire, Madagascar, hmm, Australia, China, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Has anybody counted the number of species in the whole world? That is very difficult, as there are so many places on our planet. such as deep in the oceans on the very high altitudes and in dense swampy jungles which are difficult to approach but discovery channel has estimated the number of animal species on our planet that have been so far discovered to be 8.75 million ay yo they still have to discover so many more and add to the list but while new ones are being discovered many species are dying out due to man's thoughtless activities scientists have found out that 150 to 200 species of plants or animals are going extinct every day ay yo at this rate our planet will soon lose all its natural life except of humans Charu Chachi now the picture is becoming clearer to me biodiversity is of different types you began by telling me how different geographical features of our country have resulted in biodiverse ecosystems like grasslands marine and desert then we discussed different biodiverse species like the birds feasting on the people tree 
and even the different types of trees around our homes many of which are polly's favorite haunts there is yet another kind of biodiversity genetic diversity genetic what is that does it have anything to do with genes khoob sahi within a species the genes may vary like for example if we were to consider the rice plant there are different strains of rice having different flavors size of grain and even colors like white red brown and black i remember dadi ma telling me long ago people used to cultivate not one but different crops in different seasons like the different varieties of millets very true that helped not only to maintain the fertility of the soil but also nurtured the biodiversity in foods you will be amazed to know that at one time people used to eat red white black and orange carrots but later on only the orange variety was selectively bred and the others forgotten but doesn't that diminish the biodiversity bilkul sahi many farmers found it easier to grow only one type of crop as a form of large scale farming they found it more profitable to sell the single variety of crop to big markets charu chachi is it better to have a biodiversity of plants growing in a place rather than only a few varieties i know that polly enjoys himself whenever he comes across a biodiversity of fruits and even flowers which he can relish oh yes we can get so many types of medicines if there is a variety of plants growing in a forest Can you think of any other advantages of biodiversity? Hmm, I know. If by chance a disease strikes any one kind of grain and that gets wiped out, the farmers can cultivate other foods that grow naturally in that region. Shabash! Biodiversity is also a source of pleasure, learning and hobbies. It gives great joy. for nature lovers to go for wildlife trails and provides awesome subjects to photographers to shoot even in the oceans na master ji told us that people go scuba diving and shoot videos to study the marine life very true i wish i could learn scuba diving and then go underwater in the oceans and explore maybe you will one day tara for now Would you like to discuss about the different types of forests we have in India? Yeah, forests are my favorite. Master Ji has told us that in our country we have coniferous forests with needle-shaped leaves, broadleaf forests, thorn forests, and mangrove forests. <laughs> I like the way you are rattling off about the different forests before I can even utter a word. Did you hear that? Even Polly is excited as forests are his favorite too. Now let me see if you can answer these questions about your favorite type of habitat. Which are the two types of broad-leaved trees? Quiz time! Yay! Do you mean the evergreen and deciduous trees? The deciduous trees. Unlike the evergreen, shed all their leaves as winter approaches, and then, with the onset of spring, they sprout new leaves. Full marks. Now, I want you to tell me the type of trees you would find in each of these places. Let us begin with places that receive heavy rainfall, like the Western Ghats, the Northeast, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, and places in Southern India. that experience two monsoons it has to be the evergreen trees and the forests that experience two monsoons also have moss ferns and orchids growing on their barks now what about this forest which is found in the foothills of the himalayas on the eastern side of the western ghats which lie in the rain shadow and in odisha that seems tough polly Do you know the answer? <coughs> Just guessing. Is it the deciduous trees? Spot on. Let us move on 
to the semi-arid areas that hardly get any rain, as in Rajasthan, parts of Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh. The roots of these trees grow deep into the soil for water. Their leaves may be small or even reduced to spines. That's as easy as a pie. Bohat asan hai. You are describing the thorn forests, of course. They are well adapted to survive dirt like conditions. One more to go. This is a unique ecosystem consisting of trees that can grow in marshy areas and are adapted to the saline water and remain well anchored in spite of the constant movement of the sea waves. Oh! Those are our showkeepers, the mangroves, the largest such forest existing in West Bengal, the Sundarbans. Now that we have explored the biodiversity of the flora around our country, let us look at some fascinating features of the fauna. Yes, yes. Can you tell me some interesting stories about fauna, Charu Chachi? Well, one of the most fascinating and intriguing behaviours that some animals show is migration. Do you know why some animals migrate in their thousands? Maybe to escape the cold winters? Bilkul sahi. The bar-headed geese are the champions, flying as high as 7,000 meters over the Himalayas, migrating between their breeding areas in Mongolia and North China and their wintering areas in India. That is mind-blowing! The air is so thin up there, they don't even use oxygen cylinders. In fact, many birds migrate from Siberia and Russia to our country during winter to escape the extreme cold there. A lot of them flock at Bharatpur, where conditions are just right for them. I would love to go there next winter. Will you take me, Charu Chachi? Hmm, we shall have to take Polly too. He can make plenty of feathered friends. But there are other birds like the rosy starlings who come here from Europe around August to breed. August being monsoon time in our country, the fields are lush and green. Farmers welcome them as the birds feast on locusts, making their fields pest-free. What an amazing sight it must be! My master ji has told us all about the thousands of wild beasts and zebra that migrate twice a year in Africa from Masai Mara to Serengeti and back. Yes, when water and food gets exhausted in one place, they move over to the other place. What about fish? Do they also migrate? Oh yes. Some fish, like salmon, are born in rivers and then migrate to the ocean for feeding. Seven years later, on reaching adulthood, they return to the rivers to spawn. Bears make the most of this, waiting by the river banks to gobble them up. Ayyo, what a sight it must be! And what about insects, Charu Chachi? Butterflies. Every year, between mid-October and early December, some species of butterflies, like the common crow, dark blue tiger and striped tiger, migrate in their millions from the plains of southern India to the Sayadris. Here they reproduce. Between April and July the following year, their offspring migrate back to the eastern plains. Charu Chachi, the migration stories were so interesting. Are there any other stories about animal behavior? I would like to tell you about certain endemic species of our country. Endemic? What's endemic? An endemic species is one which is found in only one geographical region. Can you tell me some of their stories? The western fly trap, for instance, is a climber found only in the western ghats. Does it actually trap flies? Why would it do so? It does so to ensure that the insect pollinates its flower. Only after being pollinated does the flower release it. 
Sounds like a horror film story. Another plant is the lost lady's slipper, an orchid endemic to pockets of the eastern Himalayas. Does its flower really look like a lady's slipper? It does. And what's more, it was thought to be extinct but was rediscovered after 50 years, hence the name. बहुत अजीब बात है नेचर कम्स अप विथ सच व्यूअर स्पीशीज वट अबाउट एंडमिक एनिमल्स हाँ हाँ कमिंग टू दैट द लाइन टेल्ड मकैक विच इज एंडेमिक टू द सदर्न वेस्टर्न घाट्स हैज अ टेल एंडिंग इन अ क्लम्प ऑफ हेयर जस्ट लाइक दैट ऑफ अ लायन मोर ओवर इट्स ब्लैक फेस इज सराउंडेड बाय अ सिल्वरी मेन लाइक दैट ऑफ अ लायन This very shy and elusive animal lives on tops of tall trees. Unfortunately, deforestation to give way to coffee and tea estates is resulting in its population declining. I wish I could save those trees so that the lion-tailed max wouldn't become homeless. Did you know that the Asiatic lion's home once ranged from western Iran? to eastern india but today this animal is found only in the gir forest of gujarat even here it faces threats like poaching and overgrazing by cattle in its home the forest i hope the asiatic lion does not ever become extinct there is a danger if by chance a disease strikes the entire population could get wiped out that is why the government is thinking of translocating some of them to a different forest charu chachi what if one species of plants invades a different habitat or country what would happen then you read my mind tara i was just going to talk of the invasive species This is getting curiouser and curiouser. Even Polly wants to know about the invasion by species. <laughs> All right, let me tell you. There are certain animal and plant species that have created great havoc on invading foreign ecosystems. The invasion could be by accident, such as seeds that travel by ship or airplane along with other cargo. or have deliberately been introduced with good intentions but without realizing the consequences what have all which species are invasive let me tell you one plant species that has spread like wildfire in many of our forests competing with the other native species for sunlight water and nutrition is the lantana it was brought here from south america for its ornamental value i have seen lantana growing wild in many places the forest officials must be having a hard time trying to remove it there is another very aggressive thorny plant prosopis juliflora or gando bawal it was introduced in gujarat owing to its extreme tolerance to drought and also since it can serve as excellent fuel wood so Has the gando bawal also spread all over? Absolutely. It has spread throughout the arid regions in Gujarat, Rajasthan and Maharashtra. In Tamil Nadu, it has conquered farming and grazing lands, forcing people to seek other livelihoods like making prosopis charcoal. Ay yo, did you hear that, Polly? <coughs> What about invasive animals? Are there any charu chachi? Plenty of those too. One of them is the giant African snail, which drives horticulturists and farmers crazy as they eat up all their plants. It was brought here from Mauritius just to observe and study. Introducing invasive species into another country seems to be a grave mistake. Don't you agree, Polly? Now that you have got to understand our natural world better, let us have a quiz. Yay! I'm ready. Polly, just whisper the answer in my ear. If I don't know. Hmm. Can you think of five devastative effects caused by deforestation? 
द ब्राइट लिटिल गर्ल तारा रैटल्स ऑफ द आंसर टू चारो चाची लॉस ऑफ हैबिटेट कैन लीड टू स्पीशीज एक्सटिंक्शन इट कैन ऑल्सो इफेक्ट द ट्राइबल कम्युनिटीज लिविंग ऑन द पेरीफेरी ऑफ फॉरेस्ट एज दे मे बी ऑप्टेनिंग फूड मेडिसिन एंड फायर वुड फ्रॉम द फॉलोइंग ट्रीज इन अ सस्टेनेबल मैनर सॉइल इरोजन मे रिजल्ट इन द एबसेंस ऑफ ट्री रूट्स टू होल्ड ऑन टू इट फॉरेस्ट अब्सॉर्ब रेन वॉटर लाइक अ स्पंज इन देर एबसेंस दे कैन बी फ्लडिंग जंगल नदी की माँ है deforestation can dry up our rivers excellent tara you are a true naturalist how about making some posters to suggest what people can do to save our natural world good idea so tara designs some posters and with the help of charu chachi puts them up in various places where people can see them planting of trees is good for our planet but please plant only native species please avoid keeping wildlife species as pets they deserve to live in their natural habitats not in captivity in your homes please avoid planting exotic species of plants like prosopis eucalyptus or australian acacia to a forest bare land as they are invasive species मत का तो पेड़ को मत का तो पेड़ को कितने सालों से जंगल के देव राय जंगल में रहते पशु पक्षियों उनका क्या होगा सब सत्यानाश नहीं रहे पेड़ न मिले फल फूल नदियों भी सूख जाती जंगल बिना काट लिए पेड़ तो न रहे जंगल न मिले हमें रोती मकान मत का तो पेड़ को मत का तो पेड़ को कितने सालों से जंगल के देवराय